Beloved heroine Winnie Mandela Spirited soldier Life on the line Mother Take up a gun and kill someone in order to achieve your freedom. Now I know I can. Namza Mowini Matikizela was born on the 26th of September 1936 in Bizana in the Eastern Cape. She became the first black social worker at Baragwanath Hospital. In 1957, she met the young Nelson Mandela, then ANC Youth League president. They married the next year and have two children, Zanani and Zinzi. In 1963, just after a few years of marriage, Nelson Mandela was sentenced to life imprisonment for high treason and banished to Robben Island. She was left to continue with the fight. Beloved heroine, is she? That day is not far when we shall lead you to freedom. Amanda! After several years in detention, she was banished to Brentford in the Free State in 1977. In 1985, her Brentford home was bombed. Winnie defied her banning order and returned to her real home in Soweto. This is a court that I don't recognize as a court, and I do not recognize this the so this uh, ban that they have imposed on my mother. She defies. It's not a question of her defying. It's a question of her carrying out the rights that she should have. <laughs> The experience was the same as it was over the weekend when I was arrested. Were you satisfied with, with, with the court outcome? There was really nothing to be satisfied about. Firstly, I should have never really been brought to trial. I've committed no crime. I simply went home like any other ordinary human being. And I'm charged for having gone home. So you, you, you intend to, when you want to see your husband, you to go home? After my visit in Cape Town, I shall be returning to my home to face similar charges. In 1986, she formed the Mandela Football Club, which was infiltrated by the governing system. Two years later, her house was burned down and she moved to Deep Kloof, where things got tricky. That it could even be dreamt that I would be responsible for the murder of a child when I have spent all my life fighting against these injustices appalls me. My sister was sitting that side, so the police came, then they asked where she was, then I told them she was not in. They just pushed me and then went through. Then they find her. I don't know, they just came with her, pulling her leg. This, and then she went to the bedroom. They say they were taking her 
away again. Then she says she wants to dress up first. They pushed her to the bedroom. And I always I also wanted to go with her to the bedroom and then they refused other police just pushed me and he told me that that I am disturbing him while he's on duty and I've been doing this since yesterday. The South African racist minority settler regime. I was sitting there interviewing Mrs. Mandela when the police arrived. Um, I got up and moved out of the room as they came in I heard them say to her that uh, we are arresting you I at that point saw an open door and slipped into a bedroom hoping to be able to witness and overhear everything from there I heard a considerable commotion uh, Mrs. Mandela was accusing the police of uh, firstly of manhandling her uh, she accused them of having injured her ankle the night before when she was arrested her ankle was heavily bandaged and she was limping um, and there was a lot of scuffling that I could hear and a great deal of shouting on both sides. The police were demanding that she go with, him, with them and she was uh, refusing. Then I heard her um, insist on changing her clothing. Uh, and the room where I was uh, in, suddenly the door opened. She uh, burst into the room. She looked startled to find me there. Uh, promptly shut the door and locked it. Uh, the police then pounded on the door demanding that she come out. Um, she refused and they began to kick down the door. Uh, it began to splinter. Uh, at that point she opened the door again and the police uh, burst in, saw me there, immediately arrested me too and evicted me from the house. Uh, and as I left uh, under the escort of a policewoman, uh, I heard her continuing to shout and uh, um, remonstrate with, with the police in the house. I was then taken outside and uh, there uh, joined up with another half dozen reporters who'd been arrested in the, uh, in the garden and in the street outside and we were taken to a police station in Soweto. Spirited soldier, life on the line, she leads the way. Sherman Bryce SABC News, New York. Paul Barber, SABC News, London. Debo Mokobo, SABC, Ufa, Kotamono, Russia. Neha Punya, SABC News, Saharanpur in Uttar Pradesh, in India. Other than that, I've enjoyed every single moment of it. SABC News, Soweto, Johannesburg. Special assignment. Crime keeps the society in terror and pain. Why so? If, if someone phones me, this phones me, tells me, okay, okay, I need a silver. And I get you all driving, I'll take it. What pushes normal people to be so hard, heartless, and brutally kill one another? The other side of it could be more for their own psychological need. Uh, it might be part of a sexual fantasy that they have. Uh, it could be about power and control. After proper investigation is followed, the perpetrator gets arrested. There is quite a massive process. And I think we do it our parents, so I think just as you said. Emotional scars remain. We would pay any price to get him back. And the sad reality is that it's, it's gone. Special assignment, the 
Unravel the Truth every Sunday at 21.30. On June the 21st, Jimmy Kruger told Parliament that 128 black people had been killed. Zietzi Mashinini was quoted in the Guardian of London at the time and told a different story. He said, we went to the mortuary each day and managed to read the numbers which were being put on the foreheads of the people who died. I saw these numbers going up to 353, and that was the first three days of shooting. A black priest who visited Orlando Police Station on June the 17th, 1976, wrote this there were about 80 people dead in the evening more bodies were coming in i found among the corpses there was a person an elderly person he was not dead by that time you could see the person struggling amongst the corpses I heard one white policeman coming in and saying that others should come and see black power resurrecting. Everything was just humorous to them. Later, when I went out, that person was dead. We are still waiting for the TRC to do an investigation into Soweto 1976. The full massacre of 1976 will have to be written about correctly. To this day, to some extent, the youth becomes suspicious of the mother body when we celebrate June the 16th. As a black African, I also find it difficult to regard this day as a day of dancing, jiving to loud and rough noise making, because as blacks, we commemorate the dead and will do so at infinity. I am part of the government of this country. I am a member of parliament. As such, I am responsible for the death of these two comrades we have come to bury. I bow my head in shame. I bow it in all humility. I have come to bury Hector Peterson yet again. I buried him personally in 1976 when the bullets of apartheid shattered his body. I come to bury him again in the year 2000. We gather to bury Abel and Andrew. We gather to bury Hector Peterson again.
They came. They colonized us. They colonized the continent. All those people who had a fairer skin than ourselves. And after looting Africa, they turned around and called us a third world. The first world was made out of the blood and sweat of the third world. I am not just here to enjoy sport. I'm here to also thank you, you as a country, my sister, for the role you played during our struggle. You housed us here. We roamed the world trying to find countries who were prepared to assist us, countries that sheltered us during those dark days. Thank you for all what you did those days. <laughs> My being here is also to pay tribute to hundreds of our children who did not make it back home. Some of the battles were fought here. Our young soldiers were tested here when you were fighting against Ian e. Smith. Our boys were there. They helped you in attaining the liberation of this country. So you aren't, we aren't just here to enjoy sport. I am here to say on behalf of the 54% of women in South Africa, and I'm sure you are more than uh, men here 52%. as well. 52%. Yes. We women can change the globe because we are in the majority everywhere. And we are going to do that. Thank you very much. In South Africa, male chauvinism is compounded by our distorted or historically manipulated cultural traditions. According to one of our greatest cultural custodians, Ubabu Kredo Mutwa, the greatness of women is evident even in our language. For example, the very word for great is female, as in Isizulu. You say, for instance, Indo, meaning a thing. And when you are talking about it, its bigness, you say, a Indogas. Indogas. It is specifically because our men tend to utilize culture as a means to abuse or oppress their partners yes. that we need to conduct research into our heritage and to revive those traditional aspects that glorify, celebrate, and cherish women. At the same time, we need to liberate our men from the confines of their ignorance. Our historical lesson must result in women driving this movement, and we shall. From my own personal experience, I landed up in court for assisting women, financially undersourced uh, women, under-resourced women, to gain access to financial institution. A magistrate from the third force with a dubious political background, described me. <laughs> he said, the accused was trying to be a modern day Robin Hood, <laughs> or robbing to feed the poor, robbing the rich to feed the poor. That was the judgment that sent me to jail. I have been fortunate enough not to be linked by some extra abstract means to the travel agency scam. <laughs> and as in Senegal, I 
expected my name to be right at the top. <laughs> Good morning to you and thank you so much indeed for choosing Morning Life. But I want to know yeah. that basic thing. Chris Alder Lewis, SABC News, in Park Town, Johannesburg. Zimbabwe, Mzondelimbeji, SABC News, Luanda, Angola. Let's take a look at your market indicators. Thanks for staying with Morning Live. Let's bring you your sports news. Let's take a look at your satellite image. Set the agenda for the day with Morning Live. When life takes a different turn. If I didn't eat the speak, he was going to affect me. Your will to persevere is ignited. I'm not a professional speaker, but I'll try my best to give you a word of inspiration. He was just trying to provide for his family. If you can't accept it, change it. If you cannot change it, accept it. And a new story begins. I made a resolve to myself. I'm learning something new. Upilom, every Friday at 5.30. Be part of the life-changing journey. You are a woman of steel. You have the boldness of a lion, the fierceness of a tiger, and yet you are so gentle, so gentle as a feather. The legacy of Winnie Mandela is giving us, as women, to stand up individually, as a group, and as a nation. For instance, when we were in Namibia, she came to tell us, people won't recognize you, but what you are doing, keep on fighting for the freedom. There is no freedom now, but what she is telling us, and what she has told us is, stand up, fight for your rights, whatever is the stumbling block, make sure it's a way. Viva Winnie Mandela, viva. She's left a very great legacy in the sense that um, her resilience gave birth to you know, and her, her persistence gave birth to uh, an uprising of women, a generation of women who will then come forth and, you know, um, be bold and confident, not only in the workplace, not only in their communities, but they will dominate in all of the world, you know, um, not in a disrespectful manner, but in a manner where, you know, you'll be able to differentiate between the good and the bad and stand up for the right things stand up for you know uh, stand up and fight for the right things not only in the corporate places like I said but in our communities like we find a lot of marginalization still taking place where women are still being sidelined you know and treated or certain cultural beliefs being adopted just to marginalize women you know but I believe the legacy that she has left is that we must remain selfless and continue to to honor 
to honor who we are as women, which is to give birth, to nurture, to lead, um, you know, to be world, to to take care and nurture world changes, world dominators, and to know that um, our voice is also just as important, you know. Um, so uh, I'm just grateful for that, you know, that today as women we can actually stand wherever we go in parliament, you know, um, we can actually, our uh, voices can be heard. So um, thank you, Mambi, thank you so much for your efforts and may your soul rest in peace and may your fam family be comforted and strengthened and by the love and the comfort of God in this hour. Thank you. Mandela, 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 Besenza is in door as a fanelanga umbuto is his way. Ming a tea ANC, 